uh, my brothers and sisters, you know what, I'm already a preacher, just let me tell you, listen, understand this, that if you come to the Word of God and it feels good all the time, then the person who's giving it to you isn't giving it to you properly. Now, now, now you will remember uh, back here a minute ago in your Sunday school lesson uh, how that when those boys preached the gospel, Peter and John preached the gospel and uh, got in trouble, they ended up getting in jail twice. Uh, and uh, when they brought them out before the Sanhedrin, uh, the Sanhedrin council said, your words cut us. Yeah, yeah, your, your, your words cut us. Uh, and I, I want to say to you, my brothers and sisters, when the gospel is preached right, the gospel will cut you. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? I, I mean, you're already here. You might as well listen. When you hear, and, and the fact of the matter is, it's just like getting alcohol into a cut. Look, it, it doesn't feel good when it's being poured on, but it's good for you. Look, you ought to leave here every Sunday saying, Ouch! Thank you, Jesus. That, 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 that ought to be your mantra when you leave here. If you leave here every Sunday, I'm ashamed of this guy. If you leave here every Sunday and your ears have been tickled. If all you've heard is some fancy talk and heard some preacher string some cliches together. It is our job to preach the word. Oh boy, I wish I had time to talk about that. I said ten minutes. But 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 this is what we ought to do and not be full of this evil passion. So anyway, I got five more minutes. Look, uh, uh, for a uh, flee also youthful lusts, uh, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. I'm going to cut right to the chase. The problem that Paul is having with Timothy is that he is weakening in his faith. All right. uh, sometimes, uh, you see, he was there at the largest church. He was there at a metropolitan church in Ephesus. Paul left him in charge. And I want to tell you now, uh, I want to see any church that I pastor uh, grow beyond the walls. Yes, sir. Every time you get more growth, mm -hmm. you get more devils. Uh, I'll try it again since I'm here at Morningstar, and I want to make sure you hear me. Uh, you're going to get some growth, uh -huh. but you're also going to get some devils. Uh -huh. uh, uh, every time... God adds to the church, and this, let me pause there, uh, 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 understand this, my brothers and sisters, it's not his job to add to the church, it's not your job to add to the church, it is Christ's job to add to the church. And you know I've been in this little uh, cycle of uh, visiting churches, and they always ask you a question, well, what are you going to do to build a church? Uh -huh. <laughs> and invariably, my question is absolutely nothing. Uh -huh. Christ said that he would build the church, and I just figured I wouldn't be in competition with him. Uh -huh. I'll let him do his job, yeah. and I'll do mine. If I preach the gospel and live the gospel and you live the gospel and tell the gospel, Christ will add to the church. But if we're not living like God wants us to live, why would God send folk to join up with folk who are already creating mess? 
why I'm asking you, would God bring folk out of mess to put them in another mess? And so I'm saying to you, my brothers and sisters, we've got to be the church so that Christ can add to the church. And so this boy is having problems there. Uh, Pastor McSwain, uh, uh, listen, he's gotten uh, a little beside himself. And uh, I know you already know, but he says, listen now, I know your mammy. That, that's, that's what he said. Uh, Pollock had said, Sister McSwain says, listen now, uh, I, I know Lois and Eunice. And if you don't straighten up, then I'm going to tell them how you acting down there? Yeah, my brothers and sisters, I, 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 I wish, I wish, I wish we had churches today who would train their children with the Bible. I, I, I know you're looking at me kind of funny here, but, but I wish folk would train their kids with the Bible. They train them with everything else but Scripture. I, I, you, I, I, I know if you've been around me, you've heard me say it one time or another, but, but uh, I, 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 I'm happy for folk who, do, who, who delve into sports. Yeah. If you are a sports aficionado, I am happy for you. Uh-huh. But I just don't think that your child ought to know more about the stats of LeBron James yeah. than they do the stats of the person in King James All that right. we preach about. Yeah. Yeah. It just seems like to me that we ought to have this idea that the only thing that we can hand our kids. Now watch this. Now I said I wasn't going to be long and I'm not going to be long. But, 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 but somehow we were not left with all the money. And I know a lot of our uh, Caucasian brothers and sisters leave their kids money in the wheels and Parenthetically, if you don't have a will, get one so you can leave your kids something. Uh, but, but, but we might not be able to leave them property and money. But doggone it, one thing we ought to be able to leave them is the Word of God. There ought to be a legacy in your life so that the kids can say, Daddy didn't have any money, but Daddy taught me the Word of God. Oh, why, why, why are you teaching your kids the lyrics from some popular song? Why don't you teach them something from the Bible? Why don't you teach them something that they can hold on to in the midnight hour? Listen, listen, I'm telling you, when things get rough in your life, you're not going to be standing at the counter washing dishes singing Beyonce. But you will be saying, God be over, great Jehovah. Lead me to the promised land. Don't you want to leave your kids with something that can hold them through the tough times? Because there are going to be times when you are not there. They're going to go off to college, get their own family, have their own issues. But they ought to reach way back and say, I remember when Mama and them used to say. Every now and then they ought to be able to say, my daddy would pray in the house. And when my daddy would pray, stuff happened. We didn't always have what we wanted, but when daddy got to pray, pull the kids around and have family devotion in the house. And you might not have a doctorate degree in theology, but you ought to be able to say, Father, I stretch my hand to this. No other help I know. 